and the process called Yoga Namaskar, which is uh, very, very vital to activate your neurological system to a certain level of exuberance. Neurological exuberance, what it means is, entire… see, human experience is far more rich compared to the experience of other creatures on this planet, essentially because our neurological system is far more evolved. So people are trying to get their neurological system up either by drinking a coffee or, uh, sn you know, sniffing cocaine or something else because they understand by invigorating the neurological system, an exuberant experience happens. Here we will teach you something, if you do it for a few weeks, you will see your neurological system is up naturally and your whole experience of life is so exuberant. We are r right now, for this particular event, we are focusing on simple practices. So one practice aimed towards creating exuberance in the neurological system and another practice to give you equanimity of mind. When I say equanimity of mind, you must understand that essentially people are using one dimension of their intelligence which is called as intellect. See right now, how many complex functions are happening on your cellular level? How much chemical activity is happening? How much neurological activity is happening? Are you doing this all consciously with your thought? No, your intellect cannot do this. There's another dimension of intelligence which is sweeping through the system and doing everything that needs to happen. Only small things you must manage, rest is all happening naturally to you. If you access this dimension of intelligence, life will become a play not a struggle. For this to happen, there are two problems. One fundamental problem is your identification with the body. Another fundamental problem is you create a whole world of your own in your mind. This essentially means you were given this body and this mind so that you can live in this world in the best possible way. But unfortunately, you don't live in this world, you create a whole new world of your own. And this world, <laughs> you, this world goes bad means, you must understand, it is just like a dream. What is happening in your head is your dream. If you can't manage your dream well, what the hell are you going to do with life? Life has too many ingredients, your dream has just you. You can make it happen whichever way you want. Your thought, your emotion should happen your way. For this, we will have a simple Kriya called Isha Kriya. I want all of you to at least invest forty to... forty minutes to sixty minutes a day for your well-being, for physiological and psychological well-being of who you are, because without this, your job, your family, your money, your earnings, all these things will mean nothing, nothing at all. So we will give you the necessary tools. But the problem with the tools, you know, <laughs> is it works only for those who use it. That's the only problem. someone ask you, who are you? What would your reply be? Your reply would most probably indicate that you either consider yourself as the physical body or the mind or the combination of the two. The experiences of all the spiritual masters and the truth that is contained in the words of the scriptures prove that your reply is wrong. It's completely wrong. Have you ever thought, what is it that any enlightened master has gained? What is it that makes them different from you? They have the same physical body as yours. Thoughts run through their minds too. Then what is it that makes them different from you? What really makes you give them so much love and respect? They have recognized who they really are beyond the body and mind. 
they have realized that their existence doesn't at all depend on this body and mind. They have realized that they are the divine infinite consciousness beyond this body mind complex. And this infinite divine consciousness is your real nature too. This is who you really are in your essence. You are not the body, you are not the mind, you are the consciousness that sees this body mind complex. Body and mind are the objects and you, the real you is the eternal subject. If you as the consciousness were not the subject, how could you even see this body and mind? If you were not the subject, how could you see what goes on in this body and mind? You can see the changes happening in the body. You can, you can feel the pain you have in any part of the body. How can you see the pain if it were not apart from you? You can see the thoughts running in your mind. How could you do so if there wasn't any gap between you and the mind? Seeing can happen, the process of seeing can happen only when there is a gap between the seer and the seen. So the very fact that you can see your body shows that there is a gap between the body and you. The very fact that you can see the thoughts in your mind proves that there is a gap between you and the thoughts. All this together prove that you are the seer of this body and mind. You are the consciousness that lights up this body mind complex. You are the consciousness that animates this body mind complex. So stop confusing your real self with the body. Stop confusing your real self with the mind and start recognizing the gap which is there between you, the real you, and this body-mind complex. Whenever anything happens in this body-mind complex, just remind yourself that I can see this change. I can observe what, what goes on in this body and mind. I can witness what happens in this body-mind complex. So how can I be the body? How can I be the mind? These are the objects and I am the subject. I am the consciousness which sees them.